Hello students, Mr. O, your substitute teacher here. And today on our nature hike, we're walking and we notice some choya where some choya doesn't belong. Now the choya cactus, and there are three types, this happens to be a teddy bear cactus, spreads ordinarily by the choya catching on an animal and part of the choya is gonna fall off, get stuck on you, and as you travel and go, that choya will fall off and create and grow a new choya. But on our nature walk, we found some choya where some choya does not belong. Let's go over and take a look. Okay, we're at the side of the house. And we noticed, if you zoom in a little closer, don't worry, I won't bite, that we got some choya cactus here. There's no way an animal dragged it over here on accident. And we got some choya cactus right here and we got some cactus and we got some insect, or we got some rat droppings right there. What that means is we found ourselves a pack rat nest. And we found ourselves a pack rat nest on top of some of our water and irrigation equipment. Now everybody builds nests. Birds build nests, humans build nests. This one's mine. And the pack rats decided, hey, this is a great container. I've got all my walls already here and I've got some water which is okay until they nibble through the water lines and then they're gonna get flooded out and we're gonna waste all this water. And in the desert, every drop of water counts. So what should we do about this pack rat nest? One thing we could do either ourselves or if we hire an exterminator is we could exterminate the pack rats. We could do that chemically or we could do that mechanically. Now remember a pack rat is not venomous. It's not hostile. In fact, they'll pretty much clean your yard. A good spot to show you. Here's another pack rat nest. And this pack rat nest has choya and in, uh, rat droppings and other assorted materials that don't belong there. And the pack rats have gathered all that to their nest. And that choya is designed to say, hey, leave me alone, predator. I got choya on my front door. Okay, so far so good. But the problem over here is they just don't belong with this equipment. So let's think of some creative ways that we can get rid of these pack rats without having to kill them. First thing we're gonna need, obviously, if we're gonna be working with choya or insects, is some safety equipment. So, safety equipment coming right in. Well, that's one way to do it. Let's see if we can get us together a little bit more politely. Now that we've got our proper gear, let's carefully get rid of that choya. More cactus. Nice job, pack rat. Okay, we're cleaned up. The exits are open. Now let's see if we can find a creative way to get rid of these pack rats without having to eliminate the pack rats. So one way we could try to get rid of the pack rats is to introduce a predator. And this is why humans and felines started congregating. The felines would go after all the rats and the rodents that were in the granaries where we used to store our grain. So let's see how our predator responds when he catches the smell of the pack rats. And not surprising, the cat food is so much easier than hunting. Let's find another way. So because our factory made home installed predator, house cat, completely failed, we gotta find another way to incentivize these pack rats to leave. So one thing we're gonna try to do is actually run some of the equipment here, make some noise and see if the pack rats figure out that this is not a good place to live anymore. Cue noise, please. And we're looking for pack rats to scurry away and say, you know what, it's time to leave. All right, we're gonna have to try the hard way. The desert pack rat, or wood rat, live in nests built of plant material like branches, twigs, sticks, and other debris. Okay. We're ready to huff and puff and blow this house down, but we're gonna do it gently. And remember, we may encounter a bunch of pack rats when we open up what they think is their home, but it's really my home. 
So remember, they're not venomous, they're not dangerous, but they're gonna be really scared. So let's give them plenty of space if we take the roof off of the pack rat's presumed home and all of a sudden they scurry. Let's see what happens. Well, definitely a very well-maintained pack rat nest. We didn't find any pack rats, but we found their home. This is where they nested. This is some of the food they eat. They brought in some prickly pear to eat. Here's all the rat droppings. All the rat droppings are not where they nested. And we don't see any rats, but we see a bunch of choya. So this is a very well-defended, well-cared, well-loved pack rats, and we found no rats. It looks like nobody's home right now. All these rats have probably moved out. So it's time to clean this pack rat nest out, and then we'll leave a couple things to say, this is not a good place to be. Okay, so before we clean out this pack rat nest, and we're gonna actually relocate it to the other pack rat nest, let's take a peek at what they got. So we got some delicious prickly pear, and I'm gonna let you see the nibbles up on top, that's where the pack rats have been nibbling and having their food. So we're gonna take this over to the other pack rat nest and just leave them their food. Special delivery. That's the best takeout ever. The next thing we notice in this pack rat nest is for their bed, they used some old furniture or old mattress. This is probably why one of those cushions in my lawn furniture has been ripped apart. Pack rats have been taking that for their bed and they used really soft material for their bed. So we're gonna gently move their bed and just like a custom mattress order, we're gonna give them all of their stuff and just let them move just a little bit down the street. Now, with all that choy that they had, all their bar bar in the front door, they can fetch that themselves. And all the rat poop, well, I'll clean up the rat poop. Let's get to work. These huge beaver dam structures can be up to four feet or 1.3 meters across. They're usually constructed in a tree or on the ground at the base of a tree or rocky ledge. Today's nest in the human's water sprinkler system was a different and super upgrade to where they normally live. Wood rats can become quite a nuisance, getting into everything from attics to car engines, stealing their treasures, damaging electrical wiring, and wreaking general noisy havoc. In the deserts, nests are often constructed in or around cactus. The nest provides both shelter from extremes of desert temperatures and protection from predators by using cactus pads and cactus spines in the construction. Okay, we've got our box back put together. We've put everything away. We've moved them free of charge from me casa back over to su casa it's probably the same family by the way or at least distant cousins we got two more steps to do let's check it out okay here's the second to last step remember how we introduced that predator a couple scenes ago in this episode who's completely useless at hunting pack rats however that cat is very useful in filling up his litter box trust me so I'm gonna do a job that normally you should do, but we're not gonna put kids in this video. I'm gonna take a little bit of that predator's scat and some of that cat pee. And we're gonna see if we can send those pack rats a little message, politely. Well, come on, let's finish this. By the way, we'll shoot jobs you should be doing around the house, like cat litter and picking up dog poop at some later episode. That's coming. Okay, remember how the pack rats took a lot of their own rat poop 
and put it outside the door along with the toilet. Now we're gonna introduce a little bit of predator scat. At both ends of the door, their front door and their back door. And this is a way of telling the pack rats, hey, predators around here, scooped around, left some droppings, maybe you ought to move somewhere else. And of course, we're trying to say, go move down the street. So now we learned in this episode how to safely and humanely incentivize rodents to move out of your house and back to their house. And unfortunately, we have to clean up a lot of rat poop and introduce some cat poop. I can't believe I used the word poop like nine times in one G-rated video. So since I probably did a lot of dirty work, it's time to clean up. Oh yeah, from a safe social distance, this is Mr. O telling you to keep calm, get going. On. What's up with this cat? Three hours too late. Now you're finally paying attention. Where were you when I needed you? Basic cat. Bon appetit.